Welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. Welcome to the channel. So March is considered this month of emotional processing and not just renewal and rebirth for so many reasons. Although it is a month of dynamic renewal and rebirth, okay, for so many reasons. Not only is March the anticipated month where we celebrate the astrological new year, Aries season, and the spring equinox, which falls in the new moon in Aries this year, but March 2023 features a lot of astro activity in Aries, in addition to many power planets changing signs after years and months of being in the same sign. There's Mars, which has been in Gemini for seven, seven months, changing signs, and the power outer planets Saturn and Pluto finally change signs, which are the most talked about powerful transits ushering in dynamic changes, defining the next 20 years for the world, okay? And so for a full astrology breakdown, including psychic oracle insight, on how Saturn and Pluto are expected to bring changes in the world and in your personal lives, right? Um, you know, like higher lessons, spiritual advice on the sort of tests that these planetary changes will bring for you according to your zodiac sign. Check out the new video posted on this channel and linked below. But if you don't know, Saturn is the planet of karmic rewards for your efforts, for better or worse, and it forces you to be accountable, to mature, and to gain mastery, and it will do so by placing challenges and to find limitations in the areas of your life related to whatever sign and house it is in, right? So that you are forced to learn spiritual and practical lessons for growth. And it has been in Aquarius for the last three years and finally moves into Pisces on March 7th. But because Saturn was in Capricorn prior to Aquarius since 2017 and is the ruler of both, Saturn uh, being the ruler of both Capricorn and Aquarius, right? While Pluto has been in Capricorn, which is also ruled by Saturn, right, since 2008, we have actually been in a Saturnian age of rulership for the last 15 years, okay? So truly, if things have felt tough for you in a particular area of your life for the for the last 10 to 15 years right you're not crazy <laughs> and it is exactly because of this heavy saturnian age influence and it's been really hard for cardinal immutable signs in particular right and you know this energy has brought societal karmas to the surface right in a way that we can't ignore anymore so Pluto finally enters Aquarius on March 23rd, just two days after the astrological new year and spring equinox new moon in Aries, which it will form a sextile with, right? So this is a powerful new moon. And then two days after that, on March 25th, Mars finally exits out of Gemini after being in the sign for seven months, right? Since August 2022. So those tidbits alone just give you a taste of why Mar March's uh, astrology is hyped, is anticipated, and considered dynamic, right? Because it's going to bring some climaxes, some closures, and just some energetic shifts for some cycles to end and begin, right? And it'll launch us into some renewal, growth, innovation, and big changes in the world that really sets a trajectory, right, for this new year and beyond so take a moment give this video a like and subscribe to the channel cozy in as we get into some ua light celestial insight from the stars right and the cards related to the collective astrology predictions and then your individual horoscope and psychic tarot insight right on challenges um what you don't see coming and spiritual advice for March 2023. So the energetic theme of March really is about us being at this crossroads, right? And where, you know, we're gonna experience illumination, crossroads, climaxes, and ultimately some karmic closures, hopefully, right? 
um, and we can think of March as both this month of emotional release and sobering reflection surrounding these important questions of how did you get here right and what happened to certain hopes and dreams and you know these also these moments of excitement surrounding where you will go from here and where you can go from here with all that you know now from the last 15 years of change challenges limitations and hardships in your personal life also the world the world has changed so much in relationship to these transits right and so it won't be a sort of neat linear process and just march being oh just a great month and da, 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 da. you know it's like yeah but you know many of you are already experiencing you know this sort of roller coaster of emotions and these sort of triggering experiences you know being at these crossroads and it's a part of this collective energetic process you know of release and reflection and then some renewal and rebirth and that will extend you know into april throughout aries season okay and so this mix of experiences and emotions you know being a bit of a roller coaster is punctuated by transits at the beginning of the month for example where we begin march still in pisces season right with mercury entering pisces as well on march 7th where it's going to make a conjunction with saturn in this critical degree of exiting aquarius and entering into pisces right and this is going to be that energy you know of like some emotional but also some sober analysis and reflection about the past and you know your future and on this very same day you know this 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 sort of uh dualistic energy right it's also punctuated by the fact that on this same day venus in aries makes a conjunction with jupiter in aries at 12 degrees while jupiter is in this sort of two degree looming conjunction with chiron you know and chiron is the wounded karmic healer right and so this is happening and sort of setting the energy these first two weeks of march right until that uh conjunction between jupiter and chiron becomes exact on march 12th right and so this puts this emphasis right on potentially being emotionally triggered and having to transmute these like painful emotions and experiences and you know trying to see and accept and hold on to the higher wisdom that these experiences in the past and the present have brought you right and so from the beginning march 2nd through the full moon on the 7th and through the end of the full moon weekend which ends with that jupiter and chiron conjunction on the 12th we have venus and mercury's conjunctions with jupiter and with saturn and the full moon illuminations which, which connects with uranus and mars sort of gifting you news and insight or an experience that is perhaps surprising emotional and sobering in a sort of spectrum of lighthearted or devastating ways right <laughs> but to ultimately bring you closure of some sort right so that you accept the truth of something and um be emotionally and spiritually liberated to strategize how to move forward right it, and it this could happen in a number of ways it could be um a conflict an apology or reconciliation attempt that you never thought you'd get from a parent, a family member, or an old twin flame, right? Um, situations with a boss, and even an opportunity to, you know, consider your personal boundaries, your personal ethics, and your desires, right? And really be empowered in enforcing your boundaries and moving towards your desires in the future. It could be news about a mentorship or a partnership that has lucrative long-term benefits, 
or it could be news of a conflict, right, related to boundaries being crossed and issues with ethical values and beliefs in relationships, right? This is energy that it could even bring you like a surprise marriage proposal, right? It could be even a financial gift or a financial proposition. It could also be news about an opportunity to learn and travel. This Jupiter and Aries transit is so duly connected to uh, learning and traveling in higher education, right? And so with these placements, March 3rd, 3-3, right, is also an, aus an auspicious day to take action and initiate an opportunity for yourself by being optimistic, looking your best, and having an important meeting or shooting your shot, and generally taking some important step toward some larger dream and, and steering your destiny. It's a good day for lighting a seven-day prayer candle and being in ritual to release old energy and to ground and welcome in new energy, right? For the next seven days, from March 3rd through March 10th, three days before and after the full moon on March 7th. And, you know, a time to really connect with your guides, the great mother who presides over the grace of Saturn. We are all about the divine feminine and the great mother here and for connecting with your higher self. So during that time, definitely spend time visualizing downloading and speaking what you truly desire for your life especially because with the full moon astrology we have the sun in pisces making a harmonious connection with uranus and taurus while it's also illuminating the moon and virgo right making the full moon uh sort of sextile with uranus right and with that in the mix it really suggests high spiritual psychic and creative energy um, and surprises, right? But the thing is, is that it squares Mars, suggesting, you know, possible conflict and even a fire-based natural disasters, um, literally in terms of what this degree um, is associated with, right? So take note of your own surroundings and the news around the full moon time related to fire-based natural disasters and um, any sort of fire-based emergencies. Um, so for more information on the full moon astrology and how it will be affecting your sign, take a look at the video posted on the channel for more details on how to really work with the energy of this Virgo full moon this week. Okay, so this energy of illumination, crossroads, climaxes, and karmic closures initiated at the beginning of the month will really continue and build through mid-March between the 11th and the 17th with a number of emotional roller coaster transits, right, including that Jupiter Chiron conjunction until we reach the energetic shift in the rebirth right of the new year and the new moon in aries and the spring equinox march 19th and onward through the last two weeks of the month okay but let's discuss that week that tricky week of march 11th through the 18th okay so we have the um, 11th being a day where there is a sextile between Venus and Aries and Mars and Gemini, and then Mercury and Pisces making a sextile with Uranus and Taurus. Okay, and um, this is a Saturday that's actually really good for initiating important conversations. Um, coming to agreements and resolves, possibly in your favor with any conflicts, from having increased confidence and resolve about what it is that you actually desire um, as a sort of result or um, resolve with some sort of situation. It could be, you know, um, 
you doing spiritual, creative, and psychic energy work. Um, it's definitely a good weekend for energy healing where people may be receiving um, energetic upgrades, right, in their um, physical, emotional, and spiritual bodies. Okay, and then, you know, this then the next day is that Jupiter conjunct Chiron, right? And that is that sort of dynamic energy. And um, to be quite honest, this Jupiter conjunct Chiron energy could bring so many different things. It could bring, you know, some sort of um, trajectory defining news or experience, right? Um, it could be some sort of breakthrough truly in a number of ways and um, definitely look at that Jupiter and Aries video to see um, more about this okay but it's also giving you know long lost twin flame reaching out to you all kind of things could be happening with that all right and then from the 13th through the 17th we have a little bit of a doozy here with the Sun and the Mercury Sun, not the Mercury Sun and Mercury <laughs> and Neptune all making a conjunction with each other in the sign of Pisces and then all squaring Mars and Gemini okay and um, then we have Venus in Aries um, squaring Pluto and sextiling Saturn right and Venus is also moving into Taurus in the midst of this too right so this is definitely climactic and uh, frustrating energy, right? And any conflicts that are sort of looming, things sort of reaching a, uh, a boiling point, a point of illumination and being at a crossroads and potential climax, right? This could be stalemates and conflicts being gaslit or emotionally manipulated by people like co-workers, friends, siblings, partners in love and or work, even teachers and classmates, right? Um, given that this is Mars and Gemini. So this could definitely be, you know, these encounters with, you know, people refusing to be accountable and honest about their deception or passive aggression. Um, and, you know, being in situations where you really have to seek to maintain emotional mastery and where people, you know, on, on all sides might be, uh, you know, not trying to compromise their beliefs in some matters where they feel that there is some distrust in the midst and there's tensions around, you know, values. And, you know, these matters may or may not be involving assets and property ownership and, you know, um, People just trying to argue their case about what they believe they deserve, right? And it just really can be emotionally triggering and confusing. Um, and, you know, where you may be confused about what best actions to take. And that just ble bleeding over into all areas of your life. Feeling confused in your daily routines. What to do in these interactions. And even questioning your goals and your direction in life. And... You know, it's just emotional meltdown energy. And, you know, these experiences could interfere with other more creative and uplifting ways you desire to use your time, energy, and attention. You know, especially because, again, it's this mix of opportunity, um, you know, in addition to just emotional turmoil. And so the advice with these uh transits right during the middle of the middle of march is you know mercury is going to be squaring mars but it's also going to be sextiling pluto and then venus is going to be squaring pluto but it's going to be sextiling saturn right and so karma is really involved here and cosmic order and you know there is a sort of advice here to take your time and responses if you can you know respond to things after or around you know the new moon and really stick to facts and be calmly assertive if you must engage stand your ground and resolve something um there is a higher chance of being more empowered emotionally stable um and supported in steering your outcomes um later right and then um 
also wait, disengage, and also don't take bait, you know, um, being baited into any sort of emotionally manipulative circumstances and, you know, with people who you just know are just not going to be honest and take accountability, right? If you can, if there is some situation where you can, go around, talk to higher-ups, talk to senior managers, right? Because it's, it's really this tricky energy um, where it's like, either you're going to wait, either you're going to be able to handle things with emotional calm, or you're going to disengage, or you're going to want to burn it all down, okay? <laughs> so you know that's that's really the mix right so um when venus enters into taurus you know we'll begin to feel a bit more grounded um there'll be more of a focus on pleasure self-care beauty comfort and you know thinking about your financial security and stability with venus entering into taurus and um, there being that square with Pluto and sextile with Saturn, this could mean a number of things. Um, someone could be trying to earn your love or your business um, by showing you how they've changed, matured, or what they have to offer. And this could just be energy of resolving some financial, legal, and even tax disputes and making some sort of financial decisions in the interest of your long-term best interests, right? This could be dealing with banks. This could be dealing with, you know, just institutions. This could be um, having business negotiations, right? And in general, this sort of configuration there is definitely giving something related to fintech, digital banking, digital currencies, cybersecurity with digital banking. Um, I'm thinking that this could even be a time where we hear something on the FTC decision on non-competes, right? Um, definitely check out that Saturn and Pluto video um, regarding some of the predictions that I had related to the astrology and how that's going to manifest in politics and governmental things, right? And in general, related to that, um, this astrology could mean a number of things in terms of global and political events. And I just want to touch on really quickly. The Mercury and Venus conjunctions at the beginning of the month, and um, then all of this energy that then transpires the remaining of the month, it could illuminate um you know, a lot of news about national leaders, like some sort of breaking news, right, about a national leader. Um, this could be a time where there is more aid that is able to reach earthquake victims. Um, there could be more national news coverage and discussion about um, consensus being reached um, and acknowledgement about the chemical and gas leak origins of COVID. Um, that's kind of in the air as a sort of controversy. And then there's also controversies of Korea's nuclear bomb testing drills with the U.S. That could uh, get more attention in the news. And uh, especially given that the full moon is emphasizing something related to fire um, and maybe um, natural disasters, just something, something with fire, right? And, and uh, certain things in the news just gaining a lot of traction and attention, right, with these Mercury and uh, Jupiter conjunctions and the Venus and Jupiter conjunction, Jupiter and Chiron, all of these things, right? So there could also even be anger and outrage in current legal battles and the pending decisions around student loan forgiveness in the U.S. and just more continued issues related to education in the news in general. And this is courtesy of, you know, the square with Mars and Gemini that is being highlighted in those um, configurations, all right? So... Now let's get to the last two weeks of March. Okay, so we have Mercury um, and the Sun entering into Pisces on the 19th through the 20th, and then that new moon in the spring equinox at the critical zero degrees, right, happening on the 21st. And, you know, this is a major new moon because of the critical degree 
because it's also in a sort of loose conjunction with Mercury and Neptune, and also sextiling Pluto in that critical degree as it's entering Aquarius, right? And so um, it's really that energy that brings in all the newness. Um, it's a powerful new moon for manifestation, confident action, right? And so stay tuned for an upcoming video where we'll discuss more about the new moon astrology and how to best work with the energies and um, any particular predictions for the signs, right? And so in the meantime, take a look at the video that goes into more detail about the Pluto and Aquarius transit, right? How that's going to be powerfully changing things since that new moon is going to be aspecting Pluto and Aquarius, okay? And then on the 25th, just two days after Pluto entering Aquarius, we got Mars finally changing signs, entering Cancer after being in Gemini for seven months. And this is a welcome energetic change, but Mars does not like being in Cancer, okay? And Mars in Cancer is also a recipe for emotionally manipulative energy um, and passive aggressive behavior. But the thing is, is that there can perhaps be more emotional tolerance in your dealings with people, right? And you being able to sort of channel your um, emotions um, to reach outcomes and results that you desire, right, in your communication. And then um, between the 26th and the 28th, we have Mercury um, in Aries, um, becoming visible and then also making a conjunction with Jupiter and this means that it is such a great time for starting new things launching new things it's great for marketing this could be a time where you're receiving great news clarity right on your directions with long-term goals and plans even you could be receiving information related to visas or spotting new opportunities related to international travel or relocation, or even study or work abroad opportunities, right? And um, I mentioned in my Jupiter and Aries video that this could be a particular conjunction where there are perhaps some announcements with more countries instituting nomad visas. Um, and then this energy is good for submitting applications and pitches and receiving news on applications and pitches and generally a great time to put your best foot forward and make long-term plans but also to you know be confident and enterprising but also realistic in your plans and to understand that there could be unforeseen circumstances that arise um, that you may not be able to plan for immediately right so don't overcommit don't overpromise um, do what you can with what you can with what you know. <laughs> but this Mercury and Aries conjunction with Jupiter is happening as Jupiter is also becoming invisible, right? So again, there could be unforeseen news and circumstances, right? And then we end the month with Mars and Cancer trining Saturn and Pisces and Venus and Taurus conjuncting Uranus, okay? So this is... Um, the Mars and Cancer trine with Saturn and Pisces in particular is really about being able to channel and express your emotions and ideas to reach people in an effective way and to really kind of attract outcomes and long-term results that you desire in your work and love relationships and in your career, right? And um, it's just, it's good for emotional stability and emotional determination and resolve with something, right? Cancer is a cardinal water sign, right? And Saturn and Pisces is a sort of stabilizing influence, right? For thinking about how to make your dreams a reality, okay? And then with the Venus and Taurus conjunction with Uranus, this is surprises, right? This could be surprises in finances and relationships. So it's definitely good for making sure that you're aware of your budget um and um this is also energy where you can meet new people um where you could get new ideas about something creative right um and that you could do business-wise uh related to fashion beauty 
the beauty industry, um, even music, um, something creative, right? And so, you know, Uranus is all about um, innovation and um, getting ideas, right? And then one of the things I forgot to mention is that, you know, both of these, Mars and Cancer, trying Saturn and Pisces with Venus and Taurus conjunct Uranus, it's like this could even be like break up and make up energy, right? And then being stronger in the long run from learning some kind of lesson, right? So it'll be really interesting to just keep a watch on kind of what transpires for you synchronistically along this time. We're going to get more things moving into Taurus. Um, so definitely uh, take note of anything related to finances and relationship that begins to kind of sprout, you know, in your life around this time. And so, so to wrap up this collective reading, um, I received some channeled angel number messages um, as some spiritual advice, right? And the numbers that I got were 1133, which breaks down to eight, um, and the number 511, right? And eight in particular and 511 are really sort of emphasizing that March and also what these transits are really saying is that it's a month of renewed karma, that your actions have the potential to renew your karma, right? In a number of ways. It could end karmic cycles, um, but it could also even extend certain karmas, right? Depending on your actions. And so um, that's also what Saturn and Pluto are really all about, okay? So it is just being really emphasized here. So I'm going to read the um, sort of spiritual understanding of the angel number 511. And a five is a number that is all about making positive life choices and important changes and about personal freedom. And it's about having to be adaptable and resourceful and to stay motivated to make progress. And Similarly, the angel number one and master number 11 are also, you know, these numbers that, all, that are all about portals of newness and beginnings, um, inspiration, and, you know, um, manifesting, right? It's about spiritual awakening and development and about us connecting to our higher selves and our divine life purpose and soul mission. And so 511 is this message from the angels, from the divine, about the auspicious changes and new beginnings in your life. These changes have come about through your intentions and actions to better your life and incorporate a more spiritual approach. This is also a directive to incorporate a more spiritual approach, I'm getting, right, as you deal with any of these um, circumstances that surface during this time of karmic closure, right? And so the angels encourage you to make changes per your soul's promptings and intuitive urgings. 511 suggests that some karmic life changes are ahead and occurring in your life right now. And so your angels angels want you to remain courageous and positive throughout these transitions they support and surround you with love and healing and this number appears when it's a message that your intentions are manifesting rapidly right and that is absolutely related to um pluto being an aquarius and Saturn being in Pisces, right? So therefore, keep your thoughts and focus positive and optimistic. Maintain a positive attitude about the changes happening in your life. And it says old and negative habits, patterns, and beliefs are being replaced with new, more positive ones. And this attracts and manifests further positive energies and opportunities for you. Go with the flow. Okay, so that is the sort of spiritual advice for the collective. And we're going to now get into your personal horoscopes and tarot psychic spiritual advice for the month. Dear Sagittarius, the messages came through really clear for you this month in the cards, and it's to ask for help, okay? Don't wait, ask for help. And this is particularly related to 
you're experiencing some challenges in your mental health this month that may be affecting your ability to complete daily and work tasks and to meet deadlines. The cards show experiences of premonitions, foggy thinking, uh, definitely getting brain fog here with this justice card. Um, it also shows um, perhaps bipolar episodes, out-of-body experience, maybe even depression, right? Not wanting to go outside and socialize, maybe being affected by bad weather, um, but having responsibilities that demand your attention and that can't necessarily be ignored, right? And they're being this situation where you're not wanting to ask for help, perhaps, right? Ask for help professionally, financially, or for an extension, right? For a deadline. I'm seeing you all worried about how missing a deadline could potentially affect your paycheck or affect the deadline for a large group project, right? It's like you don't want to drop the ball on something. That's what I'm getting with this Two of Pentacles here. And Maybe you're worried about your reputation, right? In terms of, you know, the stigmas around mental health and even spiritual awakening symptoms, right? And uh, all of these things actually creating more pressure and sort of dread around you sort of asking for what it is that you need. Some of this could be past experience or traumatic memory affecting your mental health, um, and also how you feel about asking for help, right? And there's there's something here about, you know, having challenge with consistency, energy levels, um, breaking certain habits, negative thinking, um, but also issues with feeling settled and secure in your home itself um, in terms of still acclimating to a new place, location, and trying to even get your home fully decorated or situated in a way for it to actually feel like home. And it's like this could be compounding issues of work-life balance um, or f and feeling uh, really well and even stable emotionally, right? In terms of you juggling your work responsibilities and a new job. Um, and so it's like you should know that the astrology transits during the first half of March are quite literally uh, orchestrating this. Like it's, it's quite literally the astrological equation, um, right? And uh, things could shift for you powerfully, you know, around and after the 16th where there's a powerful new moon in your sixth house of health, work-life balance and colleague dynamics. But I'm really getting this message that for you to get the best outcomes, um, the support you need, um, pleasant, surprising support actually, and also more stabilization in your work-life balance, um, you know, the psychic message that came through here is, you know, to don't wait until it's too late. Ask for the extension, uh, let, let a boss, your team, uh, someone know that you can't make a deadline um, so someone else can step in or and so that harmony and trust are maintained in your colleague relationships and for the greater good right and um, we have the oracle advice here that talks about uh, releasing the past and it says Releasing the past does not mean that we forget, nor does it mean that if something bad happens that this was okay. It means that we make a personal choice to no longer allow our history to dictate and shape our life, both now in our present time and in our future. So, you know, this is definitely, I think, about, you know, trying to move past any stigma around asking for what it is that you need if maybe you had bad experiences with feeling stigmatized or feeling like you know people have judged you when you have uh, bad mental health issues um or what have you right um and then we have the unhappiness card 
It says, unhappiness is frequently the result of an inability to live in alignment with the calling of our soul. When this happens, our uneasy and challenging emotions are an indication that we need to listen to ourselves. This card asks you to have faith and to trust. It says, get still, meditate, listen to the voice of your heart, and open yourself to receive guidance. And then the uh, giving and receiving card is about um, embracing the harmony of giving and receiving. And with this card in particular, um, I heard like the phrases like give and take and give or take and the phrase all things considered. Um, and I'm getting in some way that this is about uh, you know, you most likely, like, there's this advice here to, like, release any stigma and shame around asking for what you need so that you can receive it. And, you know, that fear that you have around, you know, asking for this or admitting that you're having some sort of difficulties and challenges with something. I feel like there's a fear that you admitting this and asking for what you need, it's like meaning that you won't be entrusted with further opportunities or responsibilities, but it's like, that's not the case. And it's like, that's what I was kind of getting from this, from those phrases that I, you know, sort of heard psychically, like give or take or all things considered. It's like this isn't the totality of what you, what you, of what represents you, right? And so to keep that in mind. And, you know, I really encourage you to watch the 2023 spiritual advice video for, for the year that's here on the channel for you and the Saturn and Pluto videos. These definitely speak more on the higher spiritual meaning of any mental health challenges that you may be having and how they're actually connected to a particular sort of spiritual awakening of, uh, psychic gifts and you experiencing spiritual and supernatural phenomena. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's actually in the astrology for you, right? And, um, so, um, the astrology also speaks to, right, that any dating and relationship challenges and even any unexpected career changes or decisions that you face this year, it's like, um, there's, there's the deeper meaning to it, right? And to not fear it, right? To not fear it, to not think that, um, any, you know, bad mental health week or even that this one opportunity, right, defines you, right, defines what you're capable of or defines what you're capable of achieving, right? Um, so, yeah, definitely look at those videos. So the astrology, you know, suggests that you may have some important, you know, launches, conversations, meetings, and opportunities appearing the last half of the month between the 19th through the 30th. Maybe it's some looming deadlines and launches around the 28th or the end of the month that you're trying to work towards with something. But in general, again, the overall advice is for you to um, don't wait, ask for what you need. And, you know, by the last week of the month, you will have an understanding of all the supportive people and tools that help you thrive um, and where you might be pleasantly surprised by how willing others are um, to help you, right? And without judgment, okay? So definitely give this video a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel, share this video, and check out the rest on the channel, and take good care of yourselves this month.